Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let's try to stay ahead of the curve. It might surprise some people to learn that the WBA heavyweight title holder is Ruslan Chikayev. Right? It's not Vladimir Klitschko. It's not Deontay Wilder. The heavyweight title is splintering right in front of us. Right? So he's the title holder. I believe he's about to lose his title. Let's talk about his opponent. Let me tell you his opponent is someone you need to know. Right? His opponent, every fight I see him, the guy is improving. I know many here online disagree with me, but this guy is one of the better athletes in the division, right? Might not have great stamina. What he does have is excellent coordination. And he is Big Daddy, Lucas Brown. Now understand, Lucas Brown from Australia beat unbeaten Richard Towers. He beat unbeaten Audre Redenko. He beat James Tony. He beat Travis Walker. Understand, this is a guy who used to be an MMA athlete. If you go to my favorites right now on my YouTube channel page, you're going to see a video that includes clips of his MMA career. Right? What that means is that he's a full body guy. He's a guy who knows how to move his legs. He's not just a upper body puncher guy. He's a guy who can move his entire body. And it shows, right? In other words, when you see him, he's much lighter on his feet than Ruslan Chagayev. Much lighter. He's going to be able to move around the ring a lot more quickly, a, m a lot more unpredictably, not straight back, but all around the ring, side to side. He's going to be able to do that a lot better than Rishlin Chagayev, right? Let me point out, too, he has great ring coverage. In other words, he can be in the middle of the ring and literally on one punch lean forward and hit you when you're close to up against the ropes right in boxing we don't really have a word for this let's bring a basketball term into the mix here he can do a great drop foot in other words he can be far away from you then he can take a step forward then throw a lunging punch where he can hit you, and I'm serious about this, from five or six feet away, right? Let me say, too, he's a big man. You might not see it at first, but if you watch his fights long enough, you're going to realize that he can move his upper body. In other words, this is a guy who can fight low when he wants to. He's not stiff like Richard Towers. He doesn't have to stand upright. The stars don't have to align for him to throw power shots, right? He can literally move his upper body. He can throw power from different positions, right? Let me say, too, that against certain opponents, if you look at the Rodenko fight, he can actually throw a pretty good jab. Now, ironically, He's a bit like Roy Jones with the jab. In other words, he's a master at distance. So he'll have a hand dangling by his side. He doesn't even have to keep his hands up. He'll have a hand dangling by his side, and he can hit you with jabs thrown from his waist. Now, when you see that, because a guy's leaving himself so open, so open to a right hand, right? When you see a guy who is dangling his hand and throwing jabs from his waist. You need to realize that that guy has supreme confidence in his ability to judge distance, 
right? He has supreme confidence in his reflexes. It makes him dangerous. Let me point out too, from a stamina perspective, it's easier to have your hand dangle than it is to hold your hand up for 12 rounds. If you're a novice and you hop in the ring, just holding your hands up for three minutes of every round is going to have you utterly exhausted by the third round. Right? Lucas Brown's a guy who will drop his hands. Let me point out, too, that he's a guy who really destabilizes robotic fighters because he's off cadence. In other words, you're fighting him and you're waiting for him to stop moving so you can time your punches. But Lucas Brown always has a wiggle. In other words, when he wants, in between punches, he'll wiggle a little bit. He'll move just enough where if you're a counter puncher and you're looking for a clear opening, his movement is going to throw you off. Now, Lucas Brown, 6'4". Rishlin Chagaev, who barely made it out of the 12th round against Freza Kendo, who had not trained for two weeks, I'm not making this up, and who had just flown into the country less than 48 hours earlier. Understand, when you look at that 12th round, Rishlin Chagaev barely makes it out of that 12th round. Right? How Rishlin Chagaev is able to fight Freza Kendo for the WBA title is anyone's guess, but this is boxing. Understand, Chagayev is not at the top of his game right now. His decision over Freza Kendo was a majority decision. Was not unanimous. Right? Against a guy who had a child in a hospital who wasn't able to train properly. Now you're telling me that 5'11", Rushlin Chagayev, who is on his front foot for the first eight rounds against Freza Kendo and then finds himself getting backed up, right? Who's moving in straight lines. You're telling me that you think that that guy is going to beat Lucas Brown? Good luck with that. I'm curious to see the odds when they're posted. I don't care if they fight this fight in Australia or if they fight this fight in Russia. I'm going to take the bigger, better athlete with what I consider to be the bigger punch. I'm going to take Lucas Brown in this fight. Right? Understand, you need to spot, and this will sound hard, but you need to spot fading fighters. Rishlin Chagayev, a guy I've praised here online, is a fading fighter. Right? He's fought guys who really don't belong in the ring. They belong on the side of milk cartons of late, right? Let's just say he hasn't been fighting guys who are in the prime of their career. Let's just say that you're looking at Freza Kendo, right? Be real tentative early in the fight, real tentative against Chagayev, and yet have much more left in the tank than Chagayev in the second half of the fight. So I'm expecting the WBA heavyweight title to change hands. Let me just go further and say that you need to look hard at Lucas Brown. Because I'd take Lucas Brown today over Deontay Wilder. Right? Understand. Wilder, Richard Towers, somebody here online is going to have to tell me what the difference is between the two fighters. Right? Lucas Brown knocked out Richard Towers, right? Let me say, Lucas Brown, in my opinion, we'll just go through some big heavyweights here. Lucas Brown is too much foot speed, way too much foot speed for Bermains to burn, right? A good fight, a fight that would be interesting, would be Chris Ariola against Lucas Brown. Right, I know Ariola lost to Stavern, but styles make fights. Ariola comes to fight. He's two-handed. Ariola has quick hands for a heavyweight. One of the problems with Lucas Brown is he doesn't have quick hands. So that fight would be an action-packed fight with somebody, in my opinion, getting knocked out. The point I'm making is simply this. Lucas Brown has lifted his game of late, and he is one of the most 
exciting heavyweights in the division right now. I believe he's literally one fight away from becoming the WBA heavyweight title holder. You need to pay close attention to this guy because he is one of the hardest hitters in the heavyweight division. He's going to look much bigger than Richland Chagaev. As an MMA guy, he's more fearless than many of these other boxers. When you look at the Richard Towers film, understand Towers is a big puncher. He's a heavyweight big puncher. And Lucas Brown at times has his hands dangling by his side. Let's get back to Lucas Brown's punch. Did you know that Lucas Brown knocks out more than 80% of his opponents? Think about that. You're talking about a Gennady Golovkin type knockout ratio here. You're talking about a Vitaly Klitschko in his prime type knockout ratio. So pay close attention to this guy. I believe he's on the verge of the WBA heavyweight title. When the odds are posted, we'll revisit this. But the bet I'm recommending here, wherever the fight is, because heavyweight title fights are 12 round fights, is to take the challenger, Lucas Brown. Let me also point out, too, that Lucas Brown is unbeaten. He's 22 and 0. Right? With 19 KOs. Let me also say, too, for those of you concerned about mental toughness, just understand Lucas Brown went to the United Kingdom to beat Richard Towers. Right? To me, when you see a guy who's willing to travel to a foreign country to beat an unbeaten home fighter, that tells me that this guy has the mental toughness. Give him a look. I like Lucas Brown over Rushlin Chikayev. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and wiresportsbetting.com. Thanks for stopping by.